Hey, Patrick Sullivan here. Welcome to my shop. I guess I've probably built at least 20, and more likely 30, cross-cut sleds in my life. Some of them were special-purpose jigs, and some were either very large or very small or very specialized. But for the day-in, day-out kind of work I do these days, I want a sled that's light enough to lift one-handed and compact enough to easily store under my saw table. I've shown you this sled before. It's been an excellent compromise for my work. However, there are times when it's a little small. Sometimes I would like to cut multiple longer pieces to exactly the same length, but the sliding stop on my sled doesn't reach far enough. So I decided to try to add an extension arm onto my existing sled. The primary fence on my sled is made from two strips of half inch or 12 millimeter Baltic birch ply glued together. I like this one inch thick plywood. It's more than twice as stiff as three quarter inch ply, but only 35% heavier. That makes for a fence that's strong, but not overly heavy or bulky. It also accommodates aluminum track on its top edge. So I made another piece of that same kind of fence that's about 33 inches or 800 millimeters long. Now, how can I support this fence which will, to a large extent, hang off the saw table. I thought I could cut a piece of plywood that would attach to the fence, but also reach around to bolt onto the sled base. This required cutting a stop dado slot in the fence. I needed to make the bottom of that dado flush with the top of the base. I marked the wood as carefully as I could, and then snuck up on a perfect fit by making tiny adjustments to the router fence and blade height. Tiny little adjustments don't make for very exciting videos, so I left that part out. You're welcome. Once the fit was right, I glued the fence to the back support. A glue joint like this is actually much stronger than most woodworkers suspect because there are a lot of misconceptions about end grain gluing. I did a video on that subject as well. It's important to maintain a 90 degree angle between the fence and the support arm. It's also important that the dado slot be a tight fit. After the glue set up, I positioned the new extension in place on the sled base and drilled two pilot holes. My plan was to drill larger holes in the base and then install threaded inserts. I had totally forgotten that I had anchored the original fence with two screws that come up from the underside of the base, and by some unfortunate bit of bad luck, I hit both screws while drilling these holes. So, two new holes in both pieces. Now, threaded inserts can easily go in crooked, especially when the camera is on. I really prefer to install them on my drill press. However, that seemed impossibly awkward, so I drilled them with a hand drill and turned them in with an Allen wrench. The inserts take quarter-inch bolts. I didn't want to have to get out a wrench every time I used this extension, so I made three-sided wooden knobs. You can buy knobs like this, but, you know, my hobby is making stuff. The wood is a scrap of 22-millimeter mahogany, which the scroll saw usually handles with ease. This time, my blade was clearly dull and started burning the wood, so I stopped. I also remembered belatedly that it would be much easier to drill the hole for the bolt head before I cut the knobs out. Okay, holes drilled. Then I covered the top and the bottom with clear packing tape which almost always solves the wood burning problem. Don't ask me how that works. A new blade sliced up the shapes very quickly. I was a little careless with the sawing, but I cleaned up the shapes with my strip sander really pretty easily. In the past, I've often chiseled out hexagonal holes to fit the bolt heads exactly. However, this situation did not demand maximum strength, and my experience is that 5-minute epoxy 
will hold this size bolt in a round hole without any difficulty. If I had, say, five inch diameter knobs and really had to tighten the bolts against heavy resistance, I would probably choose to fit the bolt heads into the wood. Once I had the bolts done, I attached the extended fence onto the sled and found another scrap of plywood lying around that was almost long enough to make a base for the fence. This has two functions. It supports the base on the saw table, and it also supports longer pieces that may otherwise sag if they are just left hanging. It also adds a little bit of rigidity to the extension. This is one of those situations where it's really hard to hold the pieces while you clamp them. I'm a little embarrassed to show you how clumsy I was here. I recently got a 23 gauge pin nailer, which is an absolutely magic solution for this kind of situation. Why didn't I buy this years ago? The whole point of the fence is to build in an adjustable stop so that I can cut multiple pieces to exactly the same length. I cut two pieces of mahogany designed to slide on the fence and glued them together. Dovetails and finger joints are completely unnecessary here. After the glue cured, I cleaned up the joint on my belt sander and rounded the corners on my strip sander. This is purely cosmetic. To attach the stop, I could have used aluminum T-Track, which I used on the original sled. But a few months ago, I bought some dovetail clamps from a company called Microjig. The clamps slide in a dovetail track, which you can make yourself with a router. I kind of like this system. By the way, Microjig's not a sponsor. They also sell some jig hardware that slides in the same dovetail slot. So I drilled the stop for one of these accessory pieces, which is shown here. Now the dovetail slot can go anywhere I want, but the hole in the stop has to align with the center line of the slot fairly accurately. I just marked it by eye and that seemed to work, but I was careful. Here you can see how the stop slides on the top of the fence and then locks firmly in place with the dovetail insert. There's no wiggle and the stop remains square to the fence and the table. At first, it did not seem to slide very smoothly, but after I coated everything with paste wax, the sticking was reduced quite a bit. I still don't think these are quite as smooth as the aluminum T-Track, but I really need more experience with them before I make a judgment. I also think you could cut a long, thin strip of hardwood with the sides beveled to 14 degrees to fit into the slot, and then just cut off a short piece every time you need another slider. You would have to epoxy in a threaded rod, but that shouldn't be so hard. The extended fence feels very solid. Overall, I'm really pleased with this setup. Moreover, I was able to make all the wooden parts out of shop scraps, and that always feels satisfying. This extension arm really is pretty much everything I hoped it would be. Sorry, but I'm not going to put up plans for this build, since it really needs to be customized to your own sled. In addition, none of the dimensions are critical. Hope you found this interesting. As always, thanks for watching.